Hello, I'm Dr. Edward Brooks. I'm a pediatrician and a research scientist at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio. And this is Derek. Derek's one of my patients with severe asthma. He's participating in a program to educate schools on asthma. Derek, you okay? I mean, uh, I'm nervous. Well, wait, now, didn't your mom take you to the doctor the other day? And the doctor said you had um, asthma? Well, uh, do you have asthma medicine down at the clinic? So Derek volunteered to help us with this program. The program was designed to educate school nurses, teachers, and coaches about how to better care for children with asthma because there were so many students with asthma now in the schools. Now, when I first met Derek, it was under much worse circumstances. He'd had a severe asthma attack at home. He was life flighted into the hospital, intubated, and was placed on mechanical ventilation. Eventually, he had to be put on heart-lung bypass because his lungs had completely shut down. Now, obviously, Derek did eventually recover, and we put him in our asthma management program, and I'm happy to say that since then, he's had no more severe asthma episodes. But Derek's one of the lucky ones. There's a lot of children that don't have access to the level of care that Derek was able to receive. Now, I've spent most of my career in asthma, taking care of patients in scientific research and in public education. I first, my first exposure to asthma was when I was five years old. I was awoken in the middle of the night by a very loud and incessant coughing. Being a curious child, I got up out of bed and I went downstairs to find out what was going on. And I wandered into my parents' room and I found my father, shown here on the right and my grandfather on the left. You can see the family resemblance. But dad was hunched over, coughing uncontrollably and unable to breathe. And he was intermittently coughing and pumping one of those old style, we call them atomizers, that had a rubber pump and it would spray medicine. He would breathe that in and then cough some more. This seemed to go on for hours, and I would just sit there the whole time watching, curious, frightened. And that curiosity never left me. And eventually I was, as you might guess, attracted to science and scientific investigation. But I also was, wanted to help people, like Dad, with medical problems. So I went to medical school and trained in pediatrics and in allergy and immunology, especially specifically focused on taking care of patients with asthma. I spent a lot of time in the laboratory and scientific investigation, and when I completed my training in 1991, I was back in the hospital taking care of patients in the clinic, and I was amazed at how many patients had asthma. Now, asthma was very uncommon when I was five years old, but as you can see from this graph, the prevalence of asthma has increased tremendously over the last 40 years, to the point now where 12% of all children suffer from asthma, about 5% of all adults. So this is a problem I have recognized that was happening worldwide, and particularly in countries like the United States and modern industrialized countries. So what is asthma? Asthma is an airway disease there is swelling and inflammation inside the small airways and constriction of the muscles around the airways that causes asthma attacks. What we know now is that the immune system is triggered by things in the environment to cause this inflammation. And some of those common triggers are shown here. Exercise, emotions, infections, allergies, changes in the weather, and then irritants such as smoke and air pollution and other chemicals. I've spent most of my scientific career focusing on why these environmental agents trigger the immune system to cause this inflammation that leads to asthma. Specifically, I've looked at allergies, infections, and air pollution as a cause for triggering asthma. And one of those studies is shown here. We were interested if air pollution was causing problems in children's asthma who lived near a particular industrial plant shown right here. Now many of these children lived right across the street 
and played in playgrounds adjacent to these plants, so we were very concerned about this. We mapped out each of these children who'd had a, a visit to the emergency room, and the blue dots are children with one visit, and the pink, purple, and red dots are children who had multiple visits, some more than 20 visits over a five-year period. When we looked at our data, shown here is these emergency room visits in the yellow, and in the red is the air pollution levels, in this case, nitrogen oxides. And you can see a very close correlation between the two. And they occur, the highest levels occur in the winter. So each winter, there's an increase in the asthma, emergency room visits, as well as the air pollution levels. Now at face value, you'd think that, okay, there's a, a close correlation between air pollution and asthma, but you also have to understand that other triggers occur at the same time. So Viral infections, also known to trigger asthma, occur in the winter. So in order to understand each individual child's particular sensitivities and susceptibilities, because every child is a little bit different. So asthma is not one single disease, it's many diseases and many different genetic susceptibilities. So one has to integrate all of these findings into a comprehensive program for each individual child which is what we've tried to do over the years. Take scientific information, develop new educational programs for public as well as practitioners, develop new screening programs to identify those most at risk and those who might respond to the newer therapies being developed. So in this program that we've developed, we called it the Children's Asthma Program, it's a comprehensive program and it's a takes a team effort, so it requires involvement of partners from the hospital, emergency room, community members and community education, provider education, school screening like the program that Derek participated in, and other special programs like asthma camps. <laughs> when we put a group of children through our asthma management program, we had fairly impressive results. So before the program shown in red, these are the emergency room visits and hospitalizations. And after completing this intensive program, you can see a dramatic reduction in their acute asthma episodes in the ER and the hospital. So there is good news. And these kinds of results have been shown all across the world. But again, not everyone has access to these kinds of integrated comprehensive programs. So much work needs to be done. And it's an uphill battle many times. And there's good days and there's bad days, but ultimately we hope to have the best care for all the children and to see them in this kind of a setting. This is our asthma camp and at asthma camp I'm just the soccer coach. And to be able to see kids running around without trouble with their asthma, to me truthfully, this is what it's really all about. Thank you. <laughs>